Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually I will give you the definitions of this uh, soluble and uh, nilpotent Lie algebras which are very very important uh, classes of uh, Lie algebras. Okay. So, we will see later why they are important, but let us first uh, see the definition of definitions and some of the basic properties. So, we will actually begin with uh, some examples to motivate uh, these concepts. So, first uh, let us look at uh, this uh, Heisenberg algebra. Okay. So, let me use this uh, notation H3 to denote uh, three dimensional Heisenberg, because later I will be actually telling you some higher dimensional I, later I will be talking about some higher dimensional Heisenberg. So, it is better to use this uh, notation H3. So, this is the Heisenberg three dimensional Heisenberg, okay. the three dimensional Heisenberg Lie algebra. So, note that this is spanned by three elements which we called it as x, y, z. So, this z is being central and whenever you take the bracket x y you should get z. So, this is the definition. So, now you can easily see that if you compute the derived algebra of this okay, which is h 3 bracket h 3. So, that will be just only one dimensional okay, which will be span of c z because all other elements will get vanished. So, now again if you take one more bracket like if you call this is H 3 1 and then if you take again another bracket with itself okay, the again the second derivative thing. So, that will be 0. So, this is something uh, very important property. Okay. Somehow <coughs> this Eisenberg even though it is not abelian, but it is not too far from being abelian. Okay. If you take successive uh, these uh, derived algebras, then at some point you are getting 0. Okay. It is actually happening very quickly because this is a 3 dimensional Lie algebra, it is so small. So, when you take uh, this uh, derived algebra second time, that time itself you are getting, you are hitting 0. So, this is something actually uh, motivates us to define uh, what is called soluble Lie algebra. Okay. So, let us uh, look at the definition of soluble Lie algebras. So, we can also see one more example maybe like, uh, so that is again very, very important uh, class of uh, soluble Lie algebras. Okay. So, let us let us look at that example also. So, you take this what is called this upper triangular matrices okay, the set of all upper triangular matrices. So, then <coughs> it is not hard to see this is actually spanned by the following elements E a j. So, these are all the elementary matrices such that 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to j less than or equal to i. So, with this restriction you get the spanning set of this. So, in particularly what is the dimension of this? Okay, Let us use the same notation. So, the dimension of this T and C is nothing but 1 plus 2 plus etcetera plus n because everything on the diagonal will contribute. So, that is n the very first off diagonal will contribute n minus 1 and so on. Then you hit the last off diagonal and then the corner. So, this will be 2 this will be 1. So, this means, so you will be getting 1 plus 2 plus etcetera plus n as dimension which is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2. So, this is the dimension of this Lie algebra. So, now let us try to compute uh, this commutator. Okay. So, if you compute the commutator you can see, so let me call it G 
to simplify the notation. So, then let us compute this g 1. So, it is the commutator g g. So, it is not hard to see this is actually exactly the strictly upper triangular matrices. Okay. So, this is the set of all strictly upper triangular matrices. Okay. In particularly, if you take the spanning set of this G 1. So, you can easily see that. So, this is spanned by the following elements again E a j. So, now we can say this i will be never j equal to j. So, this is 1 less than or equal to i will be strictly less than less than or equal to n. Okay. But uh, we can actually tell in terms of what is called level of this uh, E a j. So, it is easy to define it for E a j. So, if you call the level of E a j to be j minus i. So, level means it is kind of some kind of non-negative integer that you associate with each element and then based on that level you just induct. Okay. So, for the inductive purpose we use this uh, concept of level. So, if you define this to be j minus i, you can see that this is always greater than or equal to 0. So, now what it says in terms of level, so this is spanned by all this E i j of level, so that is j minus i at least 1. <coughs> okay. So, now I will leave it to you to check if you compute what is called this uh, g bracket 2 which is the derived algebra of g 1. So, then one can prove that it is again spanned by E a j of level j minus i which is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So, this 1 can be reinterpreted as 2 power 0. So, this actually somewhat allows you to actually make a conjecture and again which is not very hard to prove. So, I will leave it to you to verify. So, this is something I leave it to you. So, you verify that if you take this g i which is by definition inductively defined as g i minus 1 and then g i minus 1 bracket. So, which is the derived algebra of g power bracket i minus 1. So, which is spanned by E i j of level at least 2 power i minus 1. So, in particularly you can easily see that whenever you take this successive derived algebra or the brackets. Okay. If you look at pictorially what is happening, so you have this uh, upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, this is just filled like this. So, then if you take the derived algebra, so this is g. So, then what is happening to g 1? So, in g 1 all this diagonal entries are becoming 0. Okay, so, then you get this. So, then if you take again <coughs> the derived algebra, then you can see that this is actually moving up. So, you get this is 0 and then the first half diagonal entry is also 0. So, then you start getting this star. Okay, so, this will be the G 2 and so on. So, that mean every time you take this derived algebra, so you will start filling zeros for the off diagonal entries okay, and it is actually moving in the diagonal direction. So, that actually tells that uh, if you take this g power i for sufficiently large i that will be 0. Actually, the i also can be determined very explicitly using this level. So, whenever 
2 power i minus 1 is greater than n minus 1. So, then you have this thing 0. So, this is example suggest if we actually take this successive derivative uh, series, then at some point uh, we are actually uh, getting uh, this g power i is 0. So, somehow uh, these two examples uh, motivates us to define what is called soluble Lie algebra. So, first we will define what is called derived Lie algebra, uh, sorry derived series. So, what is derived series that g i that we saw that is called derived series. Okay. Called derived series. So, how it is defined? It is defined inductively. So, you start with g and then you take g 1 to be the derived algebra. Suppose g power i is defined then g power i plus 1 is defined to be the derived algebra of g power i. Okay. So, that is how one defines what is called derived series of g. So, where g is given Lie algebra. So, now what is soluble Lie algebra? So, it will it is must have been clear. <coughs> so, what is soluble Lie algebra? So, a Lie algebra G is said to be solvable if G power i is 0 for some i in n. Okay. So, now let us actually prove some basic properties of uh, the soluble Lie algebras. So, here I will make a proportion. So, we can actually uh, prove the following let G be a Lie algebra over C. So, then if G is soluble then any subalgebra of G is also soluble. and any quotient of or any homomorphic image image of G is also soluble. Okay. So, let us verify this. If K is a subalgebra, then it is not hard to see this derived series k power i is contained in g power i. So, that implies whenever some g power i is 0 implies k power i is 0. Similarly, if pi is a homomorphism which is surjective homomorphism, then that would imply that pi of g of i is equal to g dash of i. So, that means, whenever some g power i is 0 that will imply g dash power i is also 0. So, this proves that uh, any subalgebra of soluble and any homomorphic image, homomorphic image of soluble Lie algebra must be soluble. So, now let us look at the second statement. If i is soluble ideal in G and G mod I is also soluble. So, then we can say that G must be soluble. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove. Let us fix this canonical homomorphism from G to G modulo i. So, now let us say G power G mod i power n is 0. Okay. Say G mod i power n is 0. 
so that means pi of g power n must be 0 okay because pi is surjective so that would imply that g power n is contained in i so let's say i being soluble that i power m is being 0 so then that would imply that g power n power m so which will be g power n plus m which is contained in i power m which is 0 so that proves g power n plus m is 0 so that proves g is solvable okay so now we will actually see the third statement the third statement that says about uh, two soluble ideals suppose i and j they are ideals inside g so they are soluble ideals let's say then what we can prove we can prove that i plus j is also soluble So, the product i j will be again soluble okay, because product i j will be contained in both i and j. So, that will be soluble because any subalgebra of soluble is soluble, but i plus j is a superset. So, we have to verify that is soluble. So, how one can verify? We can use this uh, one of the isomorphism theorem. So, that tells if you take i plus j mod j, so that will be isomorphic to i mod i intersection j. So, that implies being a quotient of this i mod i intersection j okay this is quotient of i being a quotient this i plus j mod j is soluble okay. So, this implies i plus j mod j is soluble. Now, since j is soluble so we get i plus j is soluble using the second statement of the proposition. So, this proves i plus j is soluble. So, that completes the proof. Now, this proposition is actually allows us to define what is called a radical of a Lie algebra because what we indeed proved if you start with any two soluble ideals then their sum is again soluble. Okay. So, that actually kind of tells us that uh, if you take what is called maximal soluble ideal then that must be unique. Okay. So, let us see why it is unique let us start with g. So, this is an arbitrary Lie algebra over complex verse. So, here are everything is finite dimensional. Okay. So, that is something one should uh, always have. So, if you start with this uh, arbitrary finite dimensional Lie algebra so, since this 0 space is actually an ideal inside G which is also soluble ideal. So, one can talk about what is called the maximal soluble ideal. Okay. Let us talk about E a maximal. So, you pick I to be a maximal soluble ideal inside G. So, that exists using Jones lemma you can check or otherwise you can use here everything is finite. Okay. So, there would not be any problem in choosing this maximal soluble ideal. So, now what we claim this maximal soluble ideal must be unique. Okay. There are no other maximal ideals. Why? So, claim is what? Claim is I is the unique. Maximal soluble idea in G. So, let us start with some other ideal J, let us say also maximal soluble ideal in G. So, then what happens? One can construct this I plus J. So, this is also soluble and ideal okay, inside G. So, now note that this contains both i and j. 
So, since i and j both are maximal that would imply that i equal to i plus j equal to j. Okay. So, this proves that i must be unique. Okay. So, this unique maximal ideal we denote it by what is called radical of g. Okay. The radical of g is by definition the unique maximal ideal of g. Okay. So, now we are ready to define what is called semi simple Lie algebra. So, here is a very important definition what is called semi simple Lie algebras. So, what they are? So, a Lie algebra G is said to be semi simple if the radical of the G must be 0. Okay. So, let us see some examples. So, if you take any simple Lie algebra that must be actually semi simple. Okay. So, example 1 if G is simple Lie algebra then G must be semi simple. Why this is true? Because since uh, G is semi simple sorry G is simple. So, that would imply that the bracket G G must be non zero and G must be equal to G G. Okay. So, that means G will be never G will never be soluble. Okay. G is not soluble because if you look at the derivative series then every time you get g only. So, as g power i will be equal to g. Okay. So, that is why it will never be soluble. So, if you look at the radical of g, this is an ideal inside g. Okay. So, either it is 0 or full. It cannot be full because g is not soluble. So, that will imply the radical of g must be 0. Okay. So, that is why all these simple Lie algebras they are all semi simple. So, <coughs> we will see uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> if you take even the trivial space. So, that is also semi simple. Okay. But uh, there is a very abstract way of constructing semi simple Lie algebras from any arbitrary Lie algebra. So, that is I will list, 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 uh, list it as 3. So, let us say G be some Lie algebra, then it is easy to see if you take G modulo radical G that must be semi simple. So, why it is semi simple? Let us look at uh, G modulo radical G. Suppose it has some ideal which is actually soluble ideal. So, the radical of G modulo radical G is being non zero will imply okay, the radical of G modulo rad G being non zero will imply G mod rad G containing some soluble ideal. Okay, Let us call that is uh, J modulo rad G. So, this is the soluble ideal. Okay. And this will be non zero. So, here I have already used uh, this uh, correspondence between the ideals. Okay. Any ideal of this G modulo radical G will look like J modulo radical G for some J which is an ideal inside G. Okay. So, now 
if you look at j, so j must be soluble, why because both j modulo radical j, radical g and radical g are soluble. So, that tells us that, so this j must be soluble ideal. So, that means j must be contained in the radical g. So, that will imply j modulo radical g must be 0. Okay. So, that proves that the radical of this g modulo radical g must be 0. Okay. So, this proves that radical of g modulo radical g is 0. So, that implies g modulo radical g is semi simple. Okay. So, now I will actually, so this uh, way of uh, uh, argument actually gives us some easy characterizations of this semi simple algebras. So, let me just uh, state it as a theorem. Okay. If g is semi simple, if and only if g contains no soluble ideal other than 0, if and only if g contains no abelian ideal other than 0. Okay. So, so, the first thing is just a definition. So, we will prove that uh, G is semi simple if and only if G contains no abelian ideal other than 0. Okay. So, what is the proof? So, suppose G contains some non 0 abelian ideal, then that would imply that uh, G contains non 0 soluble ideal. So, that would imply that radical of G is non 0. So, that means G is semi simple will imply G contains no abelian ideal other than 0. Okay. Now, for the other way assume that G contains no abelian ideal other than 0. So, then we want to prove that G is semi simple. Suppose G is not semi simple, then the radical is non 0. But radical is being abelian, sorry, radical is being soluble. So, there will be some k such that when you take radical g power k which is 0, but radical g power that k minus 1 is non 0. Okay. I can choose a k such one, well. but note that the radical k minus 1 is actually if you take the bracket with itself by definition of this uh, derivative series. So, this is nothing but radical g power k, so which is 0. So, that says that radical g power k minus 1 is abelian okay, ideal inside g. So, that means g cannot be semi simple. So, that proves that G is semi simple if and only if G contains no abelian ideal other than 0. Okay, later we will actually use uh, such important uh, characterization okay, to understand more about uh, semi simple algebras. So, now finally, I would like to actually define what is called this uh, Nilpot and Lie algebras. So, now Nilpot and Lie algebras uh, they are uh, motivated from what is called lower central series. So, let me just define what is called this lower central series. So, the lower central series again defined inductively, you start with g 0 to be g and then g 1 to be the bracket g g and then g 2 to be the bracket g with g 1 and so on. So, now once g n is defined, then how you define g n plus 1 is just to take bracket with g with g n. Okay. So, that will be called lower central series. You say something is nilpotent. So, we say g is 
will put an if g power i is 0 for some i. Okay. Maybe I will include 0 as well. So, 0 space is always uh, included. Okay. So, for i, I in g plus. So, now uh, note that so, this g power i is contained in sorry contains g power bracket i. This is true for all i. So, that implies nilpotent algebras are always soluble algebras. Okay. So, basically what we have? So, we have this uh, abelian algebras and then nilpotent algebras contains abelian. And then we have this bigger class of soluble algebras. Okay. So, on the other side <coughs> we have what is called this semi simple algebras So, that is just one separate class. So, let me just uh, motivate you why these uh, classes of Lie algebras are very important. Okay. So, to motivate that we need to recall what is called Lewis theorem. Okay. So, which will be like uh, if I get a time, if I get enough time I will be able to give proof of this Lewis theorem. But anyway let us see <coughs> what is Lewis theorem. So, the Lewis theorem actually states that <coughs> any finite dimensional Lie algebra g over c is a direct product of sorry is a semi direct product of what what is called the soluble Lie algebra which is the radical part of g and the semi simple part of g which is the g modulo radical g. So, what I mean by that given g you have naturally two uh, Lie algebras associated with G, one is what is called radical. So, this is soluble Lie algebra okay. and there is this quotient G modulo radical G which is semi simple Lie algebras So, what is Lewis theorem says? So, G can be constructed from this radical g and this g modulo radical g. Okay. This is the semi simple part of g and this is the soluble part of g. So, g can be constructed from these two. Okay. So, that means g is a semi direct product of radical g and g modulo radical g. Okay. So, note that radical g is an ideal inside g, but this g modulo radical g. So, there will be a copy of that inside g as a sub algebra. Okay. So, that is what uh, so that means uh, this g modulo radical g will naturally act on radical g and then using that action one can define what is called this semi direct product and that semi direct product will be isomorphic to g that is what uh, Lewis theorem says. So, this is a very very important theorem in uh, finite dimensional Lie theory because this immediately actually brings you to like the if you are interested in classifying finite dimensional Lie algebras then using this Lewis theorem one immediately can focus on classifying soluble Lie algebras and as well as classifying semi simple Lie algebras. Okay. The classification of semi simple Lie algebras it is a very complete theory. So, done by Carton and Killing. Okay. 
So, but this classification of soluble Lie algebra is somewhat it is not that easy and it also gets uh, kind of very ugly. Okay. So, we will not actually focus on this uh, classification of soluble Lie algebras in this course. We will only focus on the classification of semi simple Lie algebras in this course. Okay. So, I will actually uh, stop now. So, maybe in the next class uh, we will actually see uh, the sum of the properties of this uh, nilpotent Lie algebras and then later we will actually prove some of the some important theorems about uh, the structure theory of nilpotent and soluble Lie algebras. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you.